How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to this week's Dragon Fable release video. And this week we have a slightly smaller revamp release. Okay, but it's not exactly small either because two of uh, the classes inside of the game got a big revamp and that is the Technomancer as well as Death Knight class. Okay, maybe you wouldn't really call it a revamp, more like a balance update, but lots of things will change. Before I talk about that, let's talk about this Delta Visors, which is the DC special for this month. And oh my god. They added animations for all of them and the picture too. So nice, like, man, I love it. But of course, this is to uh, better help them sell the item, which is a very smart business move, my app. But uh, I love that they added this as well because the whole visual aspect is certainly very appealing. Okay, so the catalyst, uh, we have the Delta Soul Visor as well as the Delta Star Visor. Okay, let's take a look at it. What's the difference? Uh, Okay, Delta Star Visor. Oh, this is a catalyst. Uh, it's a cosmetic CC to element. Uh, it's a catalyst for Master Soul Weaver and Soul Weaver. Okay, this one also the same. I think they just look different. Hmm. Okay, the Star Visor looks nicer. I think it's just a color change or something, right? Yeah, I think it's just a color change. But uh, I definitely like the Delta Star Visor more. So... Wait, is there a difference in cost? Oh, wait a minute. One is 800 DCs and one is 750. Do they both do different things? Hang on a minute. Are they, are they both completely different looks? I think they are both completely different looks. Let's check out the design notes over here. Okay, uh... Yeah, they are both completely different looks. In, in some sense so i guess i'll have to buy them both but luckily there is still a 50 percent uh dc bonus going on round on right now so if you want to get your dcs then do it quick because the bonus is going to end in less than two weeks time and i did buy myself a bit a fair bit of dc so that i can you know spend on these lovely looking cosmetics this was done uh by dracelix by the way so job well done dracelix i think they look amazing but let us go ahead and check out the uh, check it out in the full armor, okay, because that's what it's really all about since it is a catalyst <clears throat> So let's go ahead and equip our soul weaver armor Okay, so this is how soul weaver looks like and I'm gonna equip Okay, we'll start off with the soul visor first, shall we? Okay and then let's look at the catalyst for that. Oops. Oh my god. Hope the copyright claim didn't come true. Okay. Uh, wait. Wrong, wrong room. Okay, I meant to click on the armor customization room. Okay, so for armor customization, uh, color custom delta free. Okay. Okay, so delta is the same. It's just the color, I think. Yeah, and this is not color custom, so this is the color that you'll go with. And let's see. If we change elements, okay. Yeah, we get different colors, that's quite nice. Ooh. Yep, different looking colors, very nice. Silver. Okay. Yep, and thing darkness. Okay, that's cool. Uh what element is this metal? Do we have metal yet? Okay, metal is just that. Drag uh void. Okay, void is the same colour as good and evil I think. Uh water? Do we try water? Okay. Yeah, overall uh I think this I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I, I like flashier things as you guys know. So this gets a 7 out of 10 for me. Uh, definitely not bad in by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, yeah, I wish there was a lot more grandeur in it. Like I, I'm not a fan of simplistic stuff as you guys know. I prefer everything to be over the top flashy. So yeah, not... 100% my cup of tea, but I still think Tracer Lakes did a very good job. So let's look at the skills to see if there's any difference. Oh. What? 
Okay, so apparently it's somewhere on top. I don't know where exactly I'm clicking to trigger that toggle. Okay, Aegis. This looks the same. Uh, attack. It's the same as well. Pierce. Same. Impact. Same. Retro. Also the same. It's just purely, purely the look. We have any change in animations. And slave. This is also similar. Ooh, but this is very cool with the soul claws. Yeah, especially when the color fits. Wow, very cool. Uh, this is also very cool. The pen. Same as well. I forgot how beautiful the animations for this class are. I think they just look amazing. What do you guys think? I love it. Okay, maybe you can do uh, soul sync. Bus. Vacuum. <clears throat> Banish. Okay, sync. Yeah, that looks okay. Everything looks the same animation wise. Uh, now let me go back to house. Maybe you can look at Master Soul Weaver. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's look at Delta first. So if I quit Delta right now, or if I show Delta. Yeah, it just doesn't fit. Hmm, doesn't fit. Is there? The color doesn't fit, so Soul might work better, but is there a Delta Star one? Oh, Delta is just Delta. There's no Delta star. Yeah, that, that is a bit unfortunate. Hmm. Can you even change the colors on this? And is there a visor that you can click? I don't think so, right? No, no visor. I thought you can make the visor go up and down, that sort of thing, but no. Recolor? Oh. Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's... Yeah, it's not a color custom armor. It's only color custom to element. So yeah, I wish they would recolor it or let us color the armor together with it so we can fit it better with this helm. This helm just doesn't fit the whole look. So even though I like it better on its own in the set form, uh, I would say Soul Visor is the way to go. I have no idea why Star Visor was put in. Like honestly, uh, when, when the color, you know, you can't change it. It just doesn't fit well. Okay, uh, let's look at Master Soul Weaver. How does it look with Master Soul Weaver? We have Master Soul Weaver here. I think we do, right? There we go. Master Soul Weaver. Okay. We can try with the Star Visor this time. Customization. Oh! Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Master Soul Weaver is Delta Star. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. Hold on. So Delta Star is for more for Master Soul Weaver. And Delta is just for the regular Soul Wait, why does the regular Soul Weaver not have? Wait, uh, did I just miss it? Wait, hold on. Hang on a minute. Did I miss it? Oh, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know where this design comes from, this is from Mac Quest. Yeah. Guys, very cool, right? This is from the... Forgot what the name of that mech was. The one carrying the sword like this. You know, if you guys play mech quest, you will know. The one carrying the, the sword, uh, the, the knuckle duster dagger weapon like this. Yeah, it came from that mech. The, the shoulder design here, that is super duper recognizable. So yeah, things for mech quest are very, uh, I definitely love that. Hold on, let me change back to Soul Weaver. How come we don't have Delta Star customization for this? That doesn't make sense. Maybe I just missed it. Pretty sure I didn't, right? Yeah, there's no... There's no Delta Star here. Hmm. Yeah, Delta Star is only for Master Soul Weaver. I don't, I don't know why that is the case, but it, it just is. Who even uses Master Soul Weaver nowadays anyways? Uh, I would like if they actually revamp Master Soul Weaver instead of, you know, the Death Knight and... 
techno revamp that they did this uh this week but you know what can't really complain much uh i'll go through the revamp in a bit i think the revamp is amazing too briefly look through it in the design notes but uh let's just test this out as well to see if anything changed just to be sure now i haven't used this class in a long time so even if something changed i may or may not even be able to recognize it but we'll try i think everything should look about the same right almost the same Okay. Well, again, uh, the fact that it's the same color as the whole locks passing through, I think that's very cool. And this one, the same color as the sword as well. Yeah, I think that matches up very, very nicely. Oh, your claws change color to reflect that. Oh, so it doesn't matter uh, what your element is. That's nice. The claw design on this looks very cool as well, I definitely like it. Claw is probably the favorite part of the armor for me. Like the design of the claw is just very well done. Perch. Everything looks to be the same. Is Master Soul Eva the exact same? It's not the exact same, right? There's some there's some differences. No, minor differences I think. Yeah, uh, it's really been so long since I last used this. I don't even remember. Solus. Looks to be the same. Sync. Okay, yeah, it all looks the same. There's no, there's no change to the animation. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and check out the Technomancer and Death Knight class. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to hometown. I should go to house, right? Okay, so that is the main part of this week's release, which is the Technomancer and uh, Death Knight class, okay? So we will look at... Let's, let's see here. Okay, let's look at Death Knight first. Death Knight changes. Death Knight has received a large number of adjustments. To increase its survivability, damage output, and general usability. So, we'll go with that. Uh, Death Knight. Let's see. Uh, what do we use? We use the relic stuff, I think. Okay. Do I have enough space? No. Okay, uh apotheosis you go over. Okay, I think this one goes over as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so now let's uh see what a full power death knight is like. Just equip the best stuff for everything. Yep. You. Uh, how do I turn off the enemy attack? Yeah, okay. Oh, this is not, whoops, okay, this is not the best stat, uh, stat built for Death Knight, hold on, should probably change that, right? Okay, so for Death Knight, I think you want to go Intellect because of the crit buff, so let's do that. Okay, reset, stats, okay, we'll do Endurance, we'll do Intellect, and we'll do Wisdom. Pretty standard stat build for Death Knight, if you guys are wondering. And you can also use this for the Technomancer showcase later on. Because Technomancer will use these same stats. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so first of all, uh, Death Knight Relics now merged sequentially and merge prices have been adjusted. Okay, uh, I'm, I don't even remember the original prices, but we'll go and check that out later. Death Knight Scythe weapons can now be clicked to switch element between darkness and light. I think this is amazing. Yeah, the fact that you now have both a darkness and a light weapon inside of this set, I think I think that's just great. So look at this, Relic Barrier, 40 to all. So with this full set, you get 86 all resist. Of course, it'll be kept at uh, 80 total. Okay, uh, health minus 65, that is great. Good, evil 22, immobility 80. Uh, that comes from the endurance as well, light and darkness 30. So yeah, all in all, very nice. Okay, uh... Damage ranges on level 90 Death Knight weapons have been narrowed. Again, I do not remember what the original number was, but oh my god, 95 to 100. Holy moly, yeah, that's just very good. Uh, Relic Barrier now has a duration of 99 turns and updates its value when a skill is used rather than being removed when any equipment is changed. So updates its value when a skill is used. Where? It's not. Still 40. Oh, do I need to use a skill? Okay. Oh wait, no. Relic... Yeah, yeah, okay. I need to use a skill. Hold on. One second. Healing Presence base heal per turn value decrease from 3% max HP to 2% max HP, but each equipped defensive relic, which is the helm and the cape, will increase healing by 1% each to a maximum of 4%. So is this a buff or a nerf? I think... What did the original go up to with the relics? I think the relics didn't boost the original heal presence, right? Yeah, the relics didn't boost the original heal presence, okay. So this, if you use it with the items, or at least if you use it with the helm and the cape, it's a buff, or if you only just use it with one, the cape, I think everyone will still stick with 1000, uh, Wings of the Thousand Flames, and then for the helm, the helm is worth using for sure. So if you just use it with the helm, it's the same. If you don't use it with both, then uh, it's weaker, but if you use it with both, it's technically a bit better. So let's look at the heal now. Undefined HP, huh? Interesting. Okay. Not sure why it says undefined there. Probably a bug. They'll need to fix that. Consuming presence. Base damage increased value before relics reduced from 60% to 50%. Okay, uh slight nerf. <clears throat> yeah, a slight nerf to the consuming presence. Not a big deal. Okay, and this NAN HP for NAN damage plus un okay, yeah. Look at all this. They'll need to fix that. So as I was saying, this one, this is enough for sure. Uh, but this is before relics. So if you have the relics, I think it's the same. I don't really know. Yeah, consuming presence when equipping two offensive relics, weapon and belt increase from ten bonus crit and 10% base damage to 20 bone oh my god wow they doubled the value guys this is insane for a total maximum of 100% base damage with all relics equipped oh my god this is crazy doubling the base damage doubling okay not the base damage yeah yeah uh plus 100% base damage if you have everything yeah that's double of the damage and then you get uh double the bonus from uh from bonus as well as crit. Wow, that's crazy. Attack, base damage increase from 90% to 100%. Very small change, probably just to standardize stuff. Not a big deal, but it is a buff. And recovering 15 MP, I think that's great. That they are sort of like standardizing most classes to recover 15 MP on attack. I think that's very good because in longer drawn out battles where you might run out of MP even with 5 MP pots, there, there are some very, very few cases where that might happen. So this will definitely help. Gap of Undeath. Avoidance effect increased from, from 140 plus 40 from relics to 140 plus 80 from relics. So this is more to help keep it in line with what we have nowadays, uh, which is basically, you know, all the bosses with all their crazy... Hang on a second. Is this even updated? Okay, so you need to uh, clear your cache and I am now playing the official launcher so in order to see the changes It's probably just due to the cache clear. So yeah, that was based off the old one now uh, You need you need to clear a cache in order to see the updates. Okay, so if you look at it now, okay uh, It is now 40 light uh, darkness resist Converted to plus 40 or and minus 40 health resist. Okay. Yeah, now it's 99 turns. Okay. Now it's showing up properly Okay, Relic Barrier at 40, okay. Mm. Let's see, 
don't get any crits here. I don't know why. We'll heal 131 HP. Uh, that is not bad. Yeah, considering it's just a passive heal. Consume 164 HP plus 400% base damage plus 50 bonus and plus 50 crit. Uh, now we're talking. Okay, one second. Okay, so... Uh, Garb of Undeath Avoidance Effect increased uh, from 140 plus 40 to 140 plus 80. Okay, very nice. So now you get a total of 272, which is usually good enough to dodge most boss attacks. That's definitely nice. If you lost the 40 that we originally had, then you only get 232. And some of the more modern in bosses might be able to hit through that. So this is definitely nice. A buff. Instill fear, base damage increase from 90 to 100. Again, I think this is just a standardization thing. Okay, cooldown reduced from 15 to 12. Okay, I think that's nice uh, that they reduce the cooldown so that you can use it more often. Obliterate, now does 5 hits of 35%. Uh, up from 2 hits of 57.5%. So this is a pretty huge buff to how much the skill does. And the cooldown reduced from 10 turns to 9 turns. So you can use it even more often. Wow. It's crazy. Next, Unholy Shadow base damage increase from 110 to 120. Again, just a standardization thing, probably don't think too much about it, but a buff nonetheless. So slash base damage increase from 90 to 100, cooldown reduced from 5 to 4. So now we can use it even more often. Amazing! Blood tap. Okay, uh base damage increase from 90 to 100, cooldown reduced from 9 to 7, heal increase from 8% plus 4% from relics to 12% plus 6% from relics. So we get an even fatter heal now. Wow, this is just crazy amazing. Necrotic shift. Healing presence heal over time effect increase from 2% plus 2% from relics to 3% plus 3% from relics. Consuming presence dot effect increase from 20% plus 20% from relics to 40% plus 40% from relics. Oh man. Uh, consuming presence dot effect will automatically affect your target when swapping to consuming presence. Oh, okay, so now it's auto inflict. I guess that's nice. Consuming presence now also increase enemy health resist by player missing HP percent plus monsters missing HP percent over two with a minimum of twenty. Wow, minimum of twenty. I like that they added that. There, that's very good. So let's say if the player was missing fifty percent. The monster is missing 50% as well, you get like what, plus 50 health rest? So uh, how this works is that the lower your health is and the lower the enemy's health is, uh, you'll get a bigger effect. So yeah, this will basically increase over time as the battle goes on, assuming you don't heal too often and assuming the enemy doesn't heal too often. So yeah, I think this is great for long drawn out battles, especially for tanky monsters that have a lot of heal. I love it. Inspire Weakness. Base damage increase from 90 to 100, crit debuff double to a maximum of minus 100 crit. Oh man, awesome. Minus 100 crit, huh? Okay, so, yeah, wow. Minus 50 or minus 100 crit, that is just madness. I, I just love it, man. Dark right, base damage increase from 90 to 100. Uh, okay, so Unholy Will, they actually didn't change anything. Yeah, this is the one skill they actually didn't change. Not that I think it needed changing, but okay. Dark right, base damage increase from 90 to 100. Now increase crit in addition to boost and bonus. Wow. Relic scaling formula change to be consistent with other skills. So now you get crit from this skill too. Oh my lord. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What can I say? Read. So uh, base damage increase from 90 to 100. No longer needs to hit in order to apply a buff. To yourself so this is good because for monsters that are going to dodge or are likely to dodge at least we can you know we can still get a buff so that's definitely very nice enemy debuff duration increase from four turns to five enemy debuff also increases based on equipped relics maximum minus 40 bonus and boost relic scaling formula change to be consistent with other skills so it looks like the way they are changing these skills is to be more similar to the death knight uh in fight the death knight maze in fight so yeah i think that's very nice age of death cooldown no longer carries over between battles nice now for just all dot effects on self and use that last bit that last bit amazing purging all dot effects so you will not get screwed over by dots anymore i love that okay curse strike 
uh, damage increase from 105 plus 10 times relics equipped maximum of 165% to 100 plus 15 times relics equipped max of 190% so the ceiling just got increased and basically the more relics you put on there the better this skill gets so maximum 190% damage very nice and then we have jet blade renamed to call of the dead so animation change now does 5 hits of 40% total 200% damage up from 3 hits of 55% damage total 165% Extra base damage from missing HP has been doubled. Oh man. Now heals the player for 10% of damage there. Cooldown reduced from 10 to 9. Tooltips have been updated and adjusted for clarity. Some tooltips will even update when items are equipped or unequipped. Reduce lag when swapping builds with Death Knight equipped and in some other cases. Okay. Why have I changed? Does it update if I don't use a skill? I think it only updates when I use a skill. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, now let's do Call of the Dead. Ooh, holy moly. <laughs> Alright. Uh, now let's see how much damage this can do the, with, the, with the standard Death Knight rotation. Hold on, the standard Death Knight damage rotation. Let's see how much this, de uh, this uh, class can really put out, okay? With the full relics and everything. One second. So, the standard rotation for offensive is we go strength boost. I don't know if this rotation will change, but I don't think it should change much. Strength weak. Okay. Let's do that first. Dark right. <clears throat> no crits. Very unlucky. Inspire weakness. Uh, so, slash... First strike. Holy. Okay. And dread blade. Okay, so about n 9? No, not 9,000. About 8,000 damage. Okay, without H. Let's do with H. H of death. Okay, so Shrank V. So, uh, so slash. <laughs> Inspire weakness. Uh, obliterate. What is obliterate? Wait, hold on a minute. Uh, Wait, no, 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 this is the wrong one, sorry. Okay, wait, wait, I was doing something wrong, hold on. Uh, okay. So we do Shrank Weak first. Inspire Weakness. Age of Death. Dark right And then we can do uh, Call of the Gate Oh man, wow That is crazy And then you can of course continue With your Curse Strike On 392, very nice You can do Obliterate Oh okay, the buffs mostly war off I think, yeah it's Very very strong class Overall Amazing, yeah, this is this is amazing. <laughs> Overall, definitely a big buff to the class, and I freaking love it, guys. I think uh the class. Okay, let me see my class tier list. Okay, uh I know many of you guys are asking me to do a new class tier list video for Dragon Table. Okay, I'm glad that I haven't started on it yet because otherwise I need to change the tier list again. All these revamps and updates I'm doing, but not to fear. Okay, uh, that video is coming up soon. I don't know when I will release it, but uh, I definitely have plans on doing it. So right now, okay, if we look at the class tier list by me currently. Okay, let me just adjust this so you guys can see everything. Okay, so right now, Death Knight is here. So it's B plus for short questing. I don't think that's 
change much. Maybe it might get A minus because of uh, the extra damage. I'll have to think about that. Long questing is A minus. Uh, I don't think that has changed. Warring. Warring, maybe we can bump this up. Yeah, I think we can bump that up for Warring. I, I will edit this list later. Bossing, instead of B plus, I think it might be an A minus now for sure. So yeah, big buff to the class. I love it. Alright, now let's test out the second class that got changed or buffed, which is the Technomancer class. So let's go to house. Right, Technomancer also got some pretty large changes. Okay, so Technomancer. Where's my Technomancer? What? There you are. Okay, so Technomancer. Oops. Bring back Opotheosis now. Alright, so let's test this out with best in slot equipment, Opotheosis, and maybe you can, oh, I didn't, I didn't do Lucky Hammer just now, okay, so let's not do it now, but yeah, if you did Lucky Hammer just now with the Death Knight testing, you'll probably get even higher numbers, or maybe you can gear swap up to Uragiri, that will work too, so it depends on what you like. Uh, Unraveler for offense, I mean, normally people would use uh, 1000, for the resist, but I'm gonna go with this because we want to see how much damage we can get out of this. Okay, I mean this is not full offense, but this is uh, basically best in slot. So you, all right. So let's see what I have. Technomancer has received a number of adjustments aimed at defining its identity as a mana berserker, while also discouraging losing MP by use of minimum. Uh, with sets or gear swap so they really don't want us to gear swap the whole minus wisdom thing so i think they are trying to change that which uh i don't think it's a bad thing normally i don't like to do all the gear swap as well i think it's very annoying and it's sort of it's very gimmicky yeah i'm not a big fan of it so they changed that I guess that's nice so drive boost will now disable for one turn for every level over 10 with deviation so if you're level 90 uh, every, beyond the allowed threshold which is level over 5 with rather than a fixed 3 turns the wisdom deviation threshold for triggering recalibration has been fixed to be level over 5 wisdom uh, rather than level over 10 wisdom so 18 wisdom at night level 90 up from 9 wisdom at level 90 oh okay that's nice one second If the player's wisdom deviates by more than the recalibration threshold, they'll be given recalibration for a number of turns equal to each additional level over 10 wisdom threshold cross. So for example, at level 90, you'll be able to increase or decrease wisdom by 18 without triggering recalibration. However, a deviation of 19 to 27 will trigger recalibration for 2 turns, 28 to 36 will trigger recalibration for 3 turns, etc. Triggering additional recalibration effects while recalibration is already active will add additional turns to the remaining recalibration duration. Okay. Uh, drive boost rounding has been adjusted to be slightly more accurate. Heat now deducts MP from the player before calculating drive boost and usable skills for that turn. So, uh, then, oh, they rearrange all the skills by the way. So, uh, all the non DA skills are now on the left side and all the DA skills are now on the right side so that there's less confusion. Uh, nothing changed, it's just that they rearranged it, so that's quite nice. Okay, let's see. Heat, uh, calculating drive boost and usable skills. 
Okay, so heat, I think this is a buff because the lesser MP you have, the more damage you deal for this class, so that's good. Skill order, okay, attack now recovers 15 MP. That's actually very nice because Technomancer definitely needs a lot of MP. Uh, reactive barrier now has reduced animation delay at the end of the skill, so feels about the same to me. Slightly faster, just very slightly faster. This one uh, is just a QOL improvement. Mana Burst Grenades, base damage reduced from 100% to 50%. Wisdom Multiplier Triple, every point of Wisdom now increases the base damage by 1%. Okay, so overall I feel like this is... Uh, so increase. So yeah, now you get 95% at 45 Wisdom. I feel like this is a nerf because of how we normally stat when we play this class. Normally this is how you stat when you play the class. Of course, not everyone will play like this, but this is the typical one that people use. So this is a very slight nerf to the Mana Burst Grenade skill, in my opinion. Static Overlord, uh, Overload Burst, the damage range has been removed. Now it does 120% base damage. I think this is a nerf, right? I can't remember. Animation delay against multiple targets has been reduced. That's good. Another QOL. <coughs> improvement uh talk drone tracking plus crit effect increase from 50 to 75 that is amazing normally i think the 50 crit isn't even enough to guarantee crits every time when this skill should be guaranteeing you crits every time so this is a nice buff sonic boom blaster now applies three turns of minus 30 boost and uh minus 50 crit cooldown reduced from 14 to 11 wait what sonic boom blaster uh, 30 boost. So this is now a debuff skill? So no more immobility. Oh wait, no. You still get the immobility resist reduction as well as the 1 turn stun. On top of that, you get 3 turns of minus 30 boost and minus 50 crit. Wow, big buff to the skill. Love this. Cooldown reduced from 14 to 11 as well. Very nice. Force Sword. Uh, gains 50% more effect from drive boost. Oh, maximum 430% base damage up from 330%. That's amazing. Mana Eruption. Renamed to Mana Equalizer. Uh, so what this does now is uh, the cooldown reduced from 18 turns to 14 turns. So that's nice. Now it's just one hit of 300% base damage unaffected by Drive Boost. Okay, so that is... It could be... A, uh, in longer drawn out fights, this is enough. But for shorter fights, I think this is a buff for sure. When you have more than uh, 50, yeah, you can just use this to nuke, I think. That's also nice. When you have more than 50% MP, will remove 25% of your max MP. When you have less than 50% MP, will recover 25% of your max MP. So the healing got hugely buffed. But at the same time, if you're above 50%, I guess this is a way uh, for you to remove MP quickly without triggering recalibration. So this is definitely nice. Enhanced Metallic Aging. Okay, dot effect reduced from 100% base damage to 50% base damage. Ooh. Now deals 4 hits of 25% damage instead of 1 hit of... Wait, did it deal 4 hits? Wasn't paying attention. That dealt 4 hits? Yeah, this got hugely nerfed unfortunately. Uh, can't say I'm too happy about that. Photon Bow now deals 5 hits of 30% damage, total 150% up from 3 hits of 40% damage. Animation has been adjusted accordingly. Ooh, cool. Yeah, the animation is just super fast. And then, uh, Overclock MP increased to 100. Then, uh, now increases heat by 4. Two tips and effect descriptions have been adjusted for clarity. X now has some dialogue explaining the basics of Technomancer's drive core and heat mechanics. Okay, so yeah, hefty cost now, but uh, this is actually beneficial, I guess, if you want to burst down things faster. Increasing heat by 4. Yeah, that's, that's crazy good. Okay, now let me just go ahead and do this. Uh, like I, uh, Everything, the, the whole way that you use the class and set up the class definitely has changed with this. So what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to do overclock. Wait, no, maybe I shouldn't do overclock first. Okay, yeah, the, the whole way you would set up the class and use the class definitely will change with this, how you burst. Okay, I think mana equalizer first is charging excess mana. 848 without any buffs guys that's crazy overclock so i want to discharge mana as quickly as possible what other ways do i want to do it uh i guess we just do 
Okay, let's do top. I think we do top first. Then we do the standard stuff. Horizon. I feel like maybe we have to take enhanced metallic aging out of the equation now. So because of the nerf, it's not that great anymore. Uh, we can still do it. I mean, yeah, let's let's just do it. Enhanced metallic aging. Oh yeah, okay. Now it's four hits. Yeah, maybe we can do. Okay, let's do four sword. Okay, 660, 60, uh, 681. Mana burst grenades. Oh wow, look at that. 1.5k, that's crazy. Okay, and then we can do static. Oh man. Uh, yeah, overall, that is definitely pretty good. So your whole damage rotation like that, about 7.4k damage. Definitely pretty nice. You can, of course, vent heat as well. Okay, maybe we'll save that for later. Uh, let me just... Let's see. Yeah, I feel like we build up the heat level. Okay, we build up the heat level to max. Let me do overdrive. O uh, overclock, whatever the heck it's called now. Yeah, it's still called overclock. Okay, so now we do talk again. So now we have lesser MP, so our damage should be even more crazy. Heat levels at maximum. Awesome. So this should be the max damage boost. Nice. Uh, do we have enough MP for everything? Maybe we don't. Okay, wait. I think we do. Okay, wait. Let me see. What do we need to do now? Age. I don't know. Maybe aging needs to be removed from the from the damage rotation. What do you guys think? I'm not sure. Force sword. Oh man. Okay. It looks to be about the same at max as max uh, at max level compared to the rest. Man, our burst grenades. I think this one is the big one. Oh, 2.4k. Very nice. And then we can do vent heat. Boom. 1.6k. Okay, uh, pretty decent. Overall, I think the damage works out to be about the same as before. So, Technomancer, I would say overall, it's still got a buff for sure. So, that's definitely nice. And let's check out Technomancer on the tier list right now. Technomancer is pretty damn high on the tier list. Okay, uh, let's see. So, for short questing, I think I can definitely bump this up to maybe an A+. Okay, because of the mana equalizer skill, that's just super duper good. Long questing, still an S+, plus. there's a change. War Ring, yeah, I think this can be boosted up as well. The mana equalizer is like freaking, what, 800 damage? That, that's insane. Without any buffs on the first turn. 451, okay, that was with a crit, okay. uh, If you go full crit with this, yeah, I can see this being very good. Full crit with your War Ring gear. Animation is also pretty fast, so War Ring, this will probably get bumped up too. Bossing still an S+, plus. that hasn't changed, so yeah, I think Technomancer will rise pretty high up the ranks. Oh man, yeah, this is just crazy. They're adjusting all the weaknesses of it. That's nice. Uh, Geeks now has some dialogue explaining the basics of Technomancer's drive core and heat mechanics. There's always future adjustments and balance changes may come as needed. So this is just a uh, very first very rough first draft okay everything might still change so don't expect this to be the final thing i'll wait a while a couple of days or at least till next week before i adjust my tier list okay that i have written but uh if you are referencing the tier list within this week just keep in mind that it's not updated yet because we don't know what else they will change i think they might tune down death knight a little bit that's just how i feel but if they don't then i i am very happy okay with the status quo uh technomancer i don't think anything will change i think it's fine where it currently is it's not like uh it's about almost the same as before i got changed they just mix around some stuff maybe uh let you reduce your mana using the class skills rather than with swap so that's quite nice and other adjustments and bug fixes anti-thesis weapons Cumulonimbus weapons and Stormhawk have had their element swapping effects fixed yet again. Exalted Unity and Exalted Penultima no longer swap element on hit instead they can now be clicked to change between evil and good. This is great news for non-DA players who have farmed up those weapons so I like that. 
Sunbreeze Grow's uh, Dragon Lock customization upgrade dialogue has been changed to better reflect the customization unlocking, okay? Other adjustments and typo fixes, so many typos to Sunbreeze Grow dialogue will happen at a later date. Alright, the following quests have an issue fix where the character will flicker and delay loading when on screen, so bunch of quests. Uh, if you encounter these player flickers in any other quests, please let us know and we can fix them, most of them. Okay, uh... I think if you watch through my Let's Play Dragon Fable series, I will cover everything, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Book of Lock, uh, so yeah, devs, if you ever need, you know, someone to go back, play through all the old quests to see anything that needs fixing, my series, just watch through the whole series. The Book of Lock now has a new interactive banner for showing off seasonal and weekly specials. Yeah, I saw that, very nice, I love that. Anything else that may have been forgotten. Two new customization catalysts, uh... Yeah, Delta Soul has Delta customization for Soul Weaver and Master Soul Weaver. Delta Star Visor only has it for Master Soul Weaver. Okay, that's intentional. I probably should have read this earlier. You can pick them up in the shop. And that's everything for this week. Between fighting the interface, sorting out behind the scenes lag, and so, so much more. It was a lot. We also couldn't have done this without the help of our awesome testers. So huge thanks. Uh, thank yous, uh, thank yous to them. Now I'm going to club up in a nice cold place, have an awesome weekend. Don't forget to subscribe to the Dragon Faber newsletter. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to that if you guys want to go ahead and, uh, you know, get the new cosmetic weapon which I have a YouTube shot on that I released a few weeks ago. And last but not least, before we go off, I want to showcase a sneak preview of the whole Flash Weaver class and uh, this is what they currently come up with okay and you can find this inside of the design notes as well it's not something exclusive that was given to me so yeah look at that that looks freaking awesome are we finally going to get flash weaver this year i don't know there's only like okay uh it's already the end of this month so there's only like what september october november december there's only four more months left till the end of the year that means on average about 16 more releases Feels like they are getting a lot of work done for Soul Weaver uh, throughout this year. We've seen quite a few sneak peeks and I think that's awesome. Either this year or next year. I think before the end of next year, we will most definitely get it. Assuming nothing big or nothing crazy happens. But yeah, I, I am so, so freaking excited for this and I hope you guys are as well. Let me know all your thoughts on the class changes as well as the Catalyst and Flash Weaver down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And uh, if you guys like this video, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more of such future content. Also, my Discord link has been updated. You can check it out on the screen or you can click on it down in the description below to join other veterans in talking about the game. Till the next time, I'm your host, Corban Gaming. Peace out.